Joe Biden holding on to his lead over President Trump at our brand new Fox News polls. He's up by eight, leading 49-41. That's a smaller lead than Biden held in June, but still outside the polls' margin of error. I want to bring in Republican National Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel. Welcome back to the program. Nice to see you today. 106 days away. Just react to the poll number there first. You know, I, I've really struggled with a lot of these polls and the metrics behind them, Bill. Uh, many of the polls are sampling only registered voters. Just let me give you an example. In a state like Michigan or Georgia, where voters are automatically registered when they go to the DMV, uh, it's just a, a, an inaccurate sampling because in Michigan, 96% are registered voters, but only 63% turned out in a presidential election. In Georgia, it's 93% registered, but only 74% turn out in a presidential election. So you really need to be sampling likely voters. What we're seeing at the RNC is the president doing incredibly well in battleground states. We see him with, uh, with strong showings in these states that he won in 2016. It's a tight race. Joe Biden continues to hide in his basement. President Trump continues to lead to show a path forward through coronavirus, through jobs, through all the things that he's leading on. Uh, but it's going to be a, a, a race to the finish in November. And okay. President Trump's going to come this out is, with the victory. So inside the numbers, here it is. Women lead. Biden leads with women. He leads with African-Americans, Hispanics, Suburbans, uh, and independents. 35-24 on that. Do you dismiss that one as well, Rana? I, I always am looking at the metrics, and it's the battleground states that matter. We see the president in very strong shape. Are there groups that he needs to do better with in different states? Sure. Uh, but we see the president in, in a very strong position and continuing to grow his lead, especially as people are hearing that Biden is putting forward a tax increase on 82 percent of U.S. households. When Biden is saying, we're going to get rid of cash bail, we're going to stop deportations, he's embraced the Green New Deal, he signed this unity manifesto with Bernie Sanders. So he tries to run as the moderate, but the more we see him, we know he is the progressive wing of the Democrat Party. You saw the interview with Chris Wallace, I'm certain. Here is a clip from that. I want to know how you interpret this, Roland. Can you give a direct answer? You will accept the election? I have to see. Look, you, I have to see. No, oh, I'm not going to just say yes. I'm not going to say no. And I didn't last time either. What's that mean, Rana? Well, you know, we know Hillary Clinton's never accepted the results of the 2016 election. We continue to see Democrats push the false falsehood that Russians uh, affected the 2016 election, which was categorically um, proven to be false in the Mueller report. You see Stacey Abrams not accepting the results of the election. Here's what I think is important that the president is saying. Democrats are trying to mess with election integrity all across this country. The RNC is in 30 some odd legal suits where Democrats are trying to remove things like signature verification. They are trying to move safe, remove safeguards that will ensure that we feel confident in the election process. And I think the president is right to put Democrats on notice. They need to run a fair and safe election so that we all have confidence in the results. Well, um, Republican convention, I don't know what it looks like, but fill in the blank. A, a month from now in Charlotte fa uh, slash Jacksonville, what does it look like? It's going to it's going to be safe. It's going to be healthy and it's going to be a great celebration where we renominate re the president and the vice president uh, and go on to victory in November. The president all along has said we can balance health and safety and reopen our economy. And that's what we're showing with our convention. We've, re we've reduced the size that can come to Jacksonville. We're going to have testing. We're going to have temperature checks. But we're also going to allow this to go forward because we can balance both, those, both of those things at the same time. In your planning, do you find yourself adjusting by the day? We're, we're constantly adjusting. Obviously, we're working with the mayor, the governor, uh, folks on the ground. We want to make sure that it's safe and healthy. Um, I think we're getting to a really good place, no, though, now where we know how it's going to look and we're moving forward uh, with this celebration. And it's coming really, really fast, but it's going to be an exciting, exciting event culminating with the president's great speech in front of the delegates, the alternates and the guests. How does that contrast with the, the Democrats are planning in Milwaukee the week prior? Who, who, how, does you know, the, the how does the American public perceive those two very different presentations? Because the Democrats are saying we have to shut down our country forever. We have to not be able to go back to work, not be able to go back to school. There's no way to balance health and safety with getting our economy moving again. Joe Biden's going to have 300 people. The president is saying 
we can balance health and safety and we can bring people together and we can celebrate, but we can also move forward. And that's, I think, where the American people want us to be. We want to go back to work. I know I want my kids back at school. Uh, a lot of us are coming together saying, let's find solutions so that we can start being safe, safe, be healthy, but move forward. And Democrats are not are not pushing that um, right. that ideology at all. Rana, thank you for coming back today. And we'll, we'll speak in a couple of weeks again. It's an interesting contrast and we'll see how this goes. Thank you for your time in Washington, D.C.